Good um, afternoon, uh, so, everyone. Today, we are very happy to have uh, Professor Shin Seng from Princeton University, and she'll uh, he'll tell us about this uh, random matrix theory in open quantum systems. So, let's welcome Shin Seng. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for the presentation. It's very good to see you again. Um, it's a short title. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> that is kind of long and um, the, maybe quite ambitious because I'm talking about two things. Um, but um, so today I want to talk about basically open quantum systems. Um, so I'll have a very brief introduction to yeah, what is open quantum measurable systems and what kind of approaches we are uh, interested in taking. Uh, so first aspect is about the symmetry in open quantum many body systems. Um, and then it's as a concrete toy model, I will speak about uh, something like SYK type model, but the uh, SYK model in the presence of interaction to the environment. But today I will focus not too much about the physics of SYK uh, models, but more like a symmetry aspect of the problem. Um, and then second part is about, not so much about now SYK model, but really random matrix theory approach to open quantum systems. Okay, so then um, I just want to acknowledge my collaborators. So Anish and then Jia Chen and the Z, they are the uh, student at Princeton. And then I worked with uh, Kohei Kawabata. He was a uh, uh, postdoc at Princeton, but he's now a professor at the University of Tokyo. Uh, Tokiro is another uh, collaborator of mine. He's also at the University of Tokyo. Okay. Um, so let me start with a very brief introduction. So um, I am a condensed matter physicist. So I used to work a lot on, on, on quantum many-body system in closed system, isolated quantum systems, such as, let's say, spin chain or Hubbard model or something of that sort. Um, but in recent years, because of the, um, I think partly because of the technological advancement, um, there's a lot of effort of engineering interesting quantum many-body phenomena by taking advantage of the interaction between the target quantum system and then environment. Okay, so for example, you could have a, um, um, some interesting quantum systems, but it can be subject to some sort of driving from the outside. It can be some, uh, you can shine some light or something like that. Or, or in, in other type of interactions, it's the interactions uh, of the kind of, kind of like loss. You, if you have a cold atomic gas, maybe, you may lose some atoms or something like that. So there may be a loss of that kind of dissipations of that sort. Um, and then, um, um, but sometimes, so um, one may think these interactions sometimes can be a, 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 a useful um, so that we can create or we can generate, realize interesting uh, quantum phenomena. It can be our enemy to, to impress, or it can be our obstacle to realize something interesting. Um, but in recent years, um, I think there's a lot of work accumulating about the, the, the uh, phenomena which are intrinsically induced by some sort of um, um, decoherence or dissipations or measurement. These are, these are outside of the unitary time evolution, so we once again, from my perspective, um, condensed matter physicists perhaps uh, traditionally didn't speak too much about this aspect, but there are, not, uh, there are interesting, uh, many interesting uh, activities where we try to take advantage of this somehow unfamiliar uh, element of quantum mechanics to generate new uh, phenomena. For example, people found interesting um, some sort of non-equilibrium phase transitions by, by measuring quantum dynamics, measurement induced phase transitions, of course. Um, but there are many open questions in, in that kind of uh, uh, non-unitary uh, quantum many-body dynamics. Um, 
So simply, we don't know what kind of behaviors are possible in that setting. In the closed system setting and at the equilibrium, at least from my perspective, I have a Hamiltonian, there may be a gap, or maybe there, there may be no gap. And then um, um, if there's a gap, there may be a topological order. If there's no gap, it can be quantum critical phase. And then in many cases, we can use low energy effective field series to, to describe these systems. And then we can also classify different kinds of behaviors by, by leveraging some knowledge from effective field series, something like that. But once we go away from this kind of very um, um, familiar and then friendly um, known territories, there's vast other possibilities. So today I want to take the philosophy of maximal ignorance to the problem uh, so that we, we try to run uh, something about universality or possible behaviors of open quantum systems. And then I go back to the old idea of random matrix theory. Okay, oh, but before going to random matrix series, um, there's various kinds of non-unitary evolutions we can talk about. But today, mostly I will focus on in the Bradian dynamics, which is a particular kind of um, uh, quantum time evolutions, uh, which is not really generic, but it's, I think for my purpose, it is generic enough. So it consists of basically uh, two parts. So it is described by this, the uh, so-called Lindbergian uh, equation or quantum master equations, in which we have a um, um, kind of familiar part of the time evolution generated by the Hamiltonian. So this is just a unitary part of time evolution. Um, so this part is just the von Neumann Liouville equation, but we ho also have the, the, the second term which describes the uh, uh, coupling of system to the environment. So it can describe decoherence, dissipations, gain or loss, and so on and so forth. And then um, um, the, the second part is specified by the set of operators, L alpha. I, I, will, I will introduce some examples later, but this describes how systems, uh, system couples to the, to the environment. Uh, we, we call this operator either jump operator or dissipator or something like that. Okay, so just as a, as a uh, specific example of non-unitary time evolution dynamics, I would consider Lindbergian time evolution. Okay, um, for example, oh yeah, maybe maybe I want to. Yeah, that's okay. So the question is, what kind of behaviors are possible in Lindbergian dynamics? So. Once again, it used to be, at least from my perspective, we are interested in, at least more familiar with this type of dynamics where there's no dissipators. But even in that case, if Hamiltonian is very complex, then we, we, may, we may want to find the, um, some ways to understand universal properties of complex quantum many body systems. Um, so, so that's where this random matrix theory kind of approach or thinking can, can enter. So for example, so first without any dissipation, just for the unitary time evolution, I have a, a Hamiltonian Hamiltonian, but even in that context, if the Hamiltonian is very, very complicated, we, we, we basically don't know what to do. Um, for example, it can be somehow something like a very large uh, nuclei with, with a lot of interactions. Uh, so then um, in random matrix theory approach, we try to develop some sort of statistical approach to the problem. So um, instead of talking about very specific um, uh, Hamiltonian with a lot of microscopic uh, interaction parameters, um, instead of de dealing with such complex Hamiltonian, we consider a, an ensemble of random matrices because if the system is too complicated, perhaps there's not much meaning of identifying each matrix element very precisely, okay? Rather, we kind of, once again, take the um, advantage of the full ignorance to the problem. We, we just try to model the, the complex system by using random matrix. That was the um, kind of uh, uh, approach took by Wigner and Dyson. And then initially it was, perhaps for the um, nuclear physics or something like that. But 
this type of approach and the data matrix theory uh, approach now um, has been applied to one wide range of problems in condensed matter physics, maybe quantum chaos or quantum many body, uh, 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 some quantum many body systems and stat mech. Um, but beyond, even beyond the physics, um, random matrix theory it was applied to something like finance, biological systems, and it is even related to some mathematics like number theory. Um, so it's a very rich, rich, rich framework to discuss a um, wide range of, of uh, phenomena. Okay, so we are going to follow this approach today, but we apply random matrix theory to, to, to open quantum systems, okay? Um, important ingredient in random matrix theory is the, is the symmetry. Although we are fully ignorant about microscopic details of the system, we maybe still have some knowledge on the, the basic symmetry of the problem. For example, Wigner and Dyson considered time reversal symmetry. Uh, and based on the type of time reversal symmetry, we can dis distinguish three cases, unitary, orthogonal, and symplectic meaning no time reversal symmetry. And then uh, for A1, it's a, a, so also another case is a time reversal symmetry for spinless, for integer spin particles. And then we can also have a time reversal symmetry for uh, half of the integer spin uh, particles. So based on the type of time reversal symmetry, we can type by different kinds of random matrix theory and the random matrix ensembles. And then um, we define sort of symmetry classes in this case, for the case of Wigner and Dyson, there are three symmetry classes. And then each class is uh, are characterized by various universal properties. Uh, among, among the most interesting is the universality in the, in the level statistics. Okay, so for example, this is a famous plot which shows the uh, level, level, level uh, correlation function of the, of the uh, lambda matrix theory, which is this curve. And then this histogram is from some data taken from the experimental large nuclear. Okay. Um, for, for my purpose today, I want I need to extend this framework a little bit because I'm dealing, I, I'll try to discuss the uh, non-unitary time evolution and hence non Hamitian random matrix theory. Okay. Um, first, even, even before adding non um <clears throat> regular random matrix theory can be extended by considering a particle hole symmetry as well. So that is a famous tenfold wave considered by Arthur and Thurnbauer. I don't use that, this part much, but um, this, this, this uh, framework, threefold symmetry classification, and then tenfold symmetry classification of Hamitian random matrix theory uh, has been um, extended to non Hamitian setting which I will talk about later, but just, just briefly, there's a non Hamitian random matrix uh, symmetry classes, which are classified in terms of 38 symmetry classes. Okay. Hey, aren't the, isn't the time reversal symmetry supposed to be anti-linear? So I guess it would be the anti-linear versions of all the three things that- Yeah, so T is anti-linear. Right, right. Yes. So it wouldn't just be like unitary, it would have to be anti-unitary, or each would be have to be anti. Okay. Sorry, so what do you mean? Each each type of time time reversal symmetry would have to be like anti-unitary, anti-orthogonal. Oh, so this is this has nothing to do with the unitarity or anti-unitarity of T. Okay, so, so this is, is this means the ensemble of E to I T H is a unitary matrix. Okay. So so it descends from the fact that T is also it this it, yeah in this case there is no time reversal symmetry. Okay. And then in this case with time reversal symmetry, but T squares to plus one. Uh -huh. And in this case, time reversal symmetry with type, uh, t squared to be minus one. Okay. okay, so that's terminology. I, I know this is kind of um, nomenclature in the in the literature, but this is how we usually call them. Okay. 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 Yeah. Just please stop me any for any questions. Okay. Um. Yeah. Somehow I, I missed one slide. Sorry. Okay, so this is the older version, but I think I can continue. So, so, so I, I had one example to show the, the, the example of this spectrum. <laughs> Sorry, I, I brought up the, the wrong, the wrong uh, slide. But uh, for example, the example I had in this slide is that 
DC particle spin chain. Just take a regular spin chain, like XXZ interaction of a Heisenberg model, which is which can be the, 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 the uh, unitary part of this evolution, but we could add dissipations, which may be just a, a single spin SI, I forgot, SI X or SZ. Uh, and then we can plot the energy spectrum of, sorry, not energy spectrum, but spectrum in the gradient. So in the gradient is a super operator, which acts on density operator, but you can, you can, you can write this uh, 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 Liouvillian as a big matrix acting on the, on the space of density operators. And then you can discuss also the spectrum of Lindobradian, just like we discussed spectrum of H. And then, um, and then the spectrum of Lindobradian is, is complex. Sorry, I have the one, one, one slide showing this, but somehow it's gone. Okay, any questions so far? So the real part is a positive or something? That's right. So or yeah, so I also had another slide for this, but sorry. So spectrum comes in, in, in it has a complex spectrum. Real part represent the relax, relaxation, the lifetime of the state. And the imaginary part uh, is the actual energy. So it's sort of complicated because there's an extra factor of I here. So real part of the, the Lindobradian spectrum means imaginary part of the regular energy, and then imaginary part of the, the Lindobradian spectrum, the regular energy. But you'll take this into account in your random matrix uh, model for, for the Lindobradian. Well, your random matrices have positive real parts to their eigenvalues. So I will make H random and also L random. That's how I make my, my ensemble, yes, yes. And to calculate the spectrum, you double the Hilbert space? Yes, I do double the Hilbert space, sorry. Yeah, so once again, I have the one slide here, but somehow it's gone. So I have the one slide. And, uh, and the real part of the, link, the spectrum of the lint blood is always positive? Yes, it, it, it's actually, in, in this convention, it's always negative, mm -hmm. because it all states just decay. Just decay, yes. The slide was lost to environment. <laughs> Randomly. Randomly. <laughs> right. So yeah, so I will come back to the kind of condition on the constraint of spectrum because that is that's pretty the important role when I classify the random matrix ensemble for this. Um, um okay. Yeah, so but then I want to discuss, yeah. Sorry, I think can I actually change slide? It's kind of yeah, strange. stop it and start yeah. there. Okay, so um, uh, I have to go to overleaf. I hope it's connected. Yeah, this is the correct version. Um, my one two. Oh boy, no, it does not work. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> And so it seems like I'm not connected now. I don't know why. You have to recompile the file and then download. Okay, that's right. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, this was what I was talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Um, right, so this was what we, we just talked about. <laughs> And then, the, as an example, um, for example, we could consider just a regular spin chain, uh, but we add some dissipation. And then, depending on the choice of the parameter, this is how the spectrum looks like. Spectrum is, the, the other part of spectrum is always negative, that means almost decay. And then this direction, the real energy, okay? Um, we will see more examples because I'm talking, I'm going to talk about SYK problem. So, um, um, so we now try to discuss um, many body Lindobradians following the spirit of random matrix theory. And then as, as, a, as a choice of my problem, I will work with fermions, okay? And then for the Hamiltonian part, most of the natural choice for the structureless random many body Hamiltonian is SYK type interactions. So, so, so this would be the random matrix, many body random matrix 
which enters into my um, my um, dynamics. So this has been considered, for example, in the nuclear physics con context as a many body version of random matrix or second quantized version of random matrix theory. And of course, it's also discussed such as FBA and the Kita F for, for other interesting reasons. Um, um, in, in particular, this can be a toy model for uh, quantum many body systems without uh, very defined quasi particles, or maybe it's a toy model of, of quantum many body chaos. And then and then, um, it, it's also the toy model for holographic duality axioms. Okay, so this is the Hamiltonian part. This is the um, second quantized version of most random Hamiltonian I can think of. And then to that, I, I add this type of jump operators, which consists of Peabody fermion operators and then some uh, random coefficient entering here. And then there's many such operators labeled by n. Okay, so this is the simple model. So question is, what is the symmetry properties of these um, uh, SYK Lindbergians, and then what are their spectral properties, complex uh, spectral uh, properties? So here P can be even or odd. Yes, P can be even or odd. Yes, the Lindbergian is fermion parity, to, uh, strong fermion part. Uh, sorry, weak fermion parity, even, but L can be fermion parity. Okay, any other questions? Okay, but before showing some, we, we also studied some physics, and then um, I, I, I talked about this somewhere else, so I don't talk too much about it, but just to give you what kind of physics we get out of this model, there's just one slide for this. So, um, that's why get in the gradient with some choice of parameters, we can analyze using the regular large N technique, and then we can, we can study, for example, stationary properties by studying something like Green's functions. And then, um, for example, this is a particular choice of uh, my SYK in the Bradia with four body SYK interactions and the two body jump operators. And then um, what I'm plotting here is the uh, uh, decay rate defined here as a function of K, which, which basically measure the strengths of dissipation, strengths of this uh, two-body jump operator. Um, so we see many interesting behaviors. Initially, when I started with this problem, I didn't know what to look for, but as it turns out, there, this model itself is rather rich. I can spend maybe one hour to just discuss, discuss about phenomenology of this model. But for example, you could find a, a, a transition induced by some sort of transition induced by cranking up the strengths of dissipation. So as you can see, the decay rate has this interesting kink here. And if you also look at the oscillation, coherent oscillation, coherent oscillation just disappears of some, uh, some uh, critical uh, strengths of dissipation. So there's a non-dissipative dissipative, uh, phase transitions. And it's also, um, decay rate is also fully, very um, non-monotonic behavior as a function of dissipation. That's one interesting finding. Another interesting finding is that uh, if you take the limit where this coupling K, dissipation K to zero, the, the, the decay rate remains finite. So one may think it's a bit interesting because it's a, it's a zero dissipation limit, but decay somehow remains. So I think what is happening here is that since I'm taking large N limit, it's a quantum many body system. So quantum many body system has on its own decay rate because it can develop imaginary part of the self energy just from the random interactions. Um, um, so, so this is sometimes called anomalous diffusion. Uh, uh, this is some sort of, once again, maybe um, phase transition in dissipative system where the limit of zero dissipation and the large end limit, they, they do not commute. Just like a, a transition in the transverse realizing model, large, large system size limit and then zero magnetic field limit, they do not commute. Okay? And then there's this other. Is the, this is the thermal Green's function? Or which? This is the retarded, retarded in, in, in which state? Thermal state? In, in temperature? Ground state? 
this is average of all initial state. So infinite temperature. Infinite temperature state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, we're used to things decaying right at infinite temperature or even at finite temperature. Um, with anticipation. It's a quasi normal mode. Yeah, so that, 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 that's 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 yeah. exactly okay. what this is detected. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah, that's exactly what this is. Okay. Um, and then there's other interesting phenomena which I don't present here, but for example, there's the dynamical phase transition uh, uh, as a function of time and, and so on and so forth. But today I, I, I will just be very brief about uh, phenomenology of this model. The, 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 just to clarify that, the, the gamma is only because of the non hermeticity or the gamma it would be there anyway. Yeah, I think it's yeah, there anyway. Gamma would it, be there even at zero, yeah, zero, right. zero, so zero just, dissipation. Just I see. Yeah. Just that it's continuous in K. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So this is actually later expand by a lot of people. For example, I, I forgot to cite some papers, but there's the um, a lot of discussion on the Lindbergian gap in the in the large volume limit. Okay. Um. So, but now I want to do um. Symmetry classification. So, so this was first done just in the context of SYK interactions without any dissipations. For example, these papers discuss the uh, 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 symmetries and then uh, energy level properties of SYK interactions among, among other papers. Um, so um, as it turns out, um, symmetry properties of the SYK Hamiltonian depends on uh, n number of fermion operators in the program, module eight. Um, so the context to understand this periodicity is the is a topological superconductor. So um, um, yeah, so I go back to here, but in condensed matter context, Majorana fermions appears at the boundary of one dimensional topological superconductor. So many people are looking for Majorana fermions at the edge of topological superconductor. Um, um, and then um, as it was pointed out by Fedikovsky and Titaev, the, the topological properties of topological superconductors depend on the number of Majorana edge mode modulo eight. At, basically at, at every eight copies of uh, Majorana fermions, Topological property is, is from topological perspective, it's, it's trivial. Um, but for any other number of Majorana fermions, there's a, a non zero topological invariant, and then it's a non, non trivial topological superconductor. The bulk topological aspect is not so much relevant today, but, but anyway, interestingly, the level statistics and symmetries of this SYK model depends on N module 8, and they study. Uh, uh, Level statistics, so depending on the number of fermion, sometimes level statistics is the level statistics of Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, Gaussian unitary ensemble, or Gaussian symplectic ensemble, and so on and so forth. Is there any time reversal symmetry in this problem? Like the thing you quoted above was time reversal symmetry. That's right. So this is the time reversal. This is a, this is with time reversal symmetry. So, so it's like interaction. It's like a model. Uh, as written, yeah, J is J is pop real, J is real. I see. Yes. Question: Is there a more concrete connection to topological superconductors than just having Majoranas in both situations? More concrete. Um, like for example, I, I, think, I think this is very concrete. This is very concrete. So it is a common phenomenon that if you have a bulk topological system. And then you add the disorder only at the at the boundary of the system, then um, boundary system exhibit anomalous behavior in the presence of uh, uh, impurities. Most common case is that uh, boundary of uh, topological system completely evade Anderson localization. That is actually was used to classify different topological systems. And then yes, it's basically the same thing. But since it's zero d. We just look at the random matrix properties. Is there a random matrix like spectrum in the topological superconductor case too? Like with it's, bulk, you mean? Yeah, like what's kind of this? Yeah, I'm assuming bulk is gapped. Okay. And then 
but 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 low energy properties are completely specified by the excitation of the boundaries. So it makes sense to decouple these two excitations. And then we can just do the random matrix theory on the boundary. But as it turns out, even at the level, there's some sort of anomalies or something like that, which still remain by the bulk properties, which in this case, it's a level, level statistics. Any questions? Yeah, so we pretty much follow the idea of this, this work. We, we, we follow, uh, we, we take SYK model and then study level statistics or symmetry properties. So he, here comes the, 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 the actual analysis we did. So um, we try to develop a symmetry classification of fermionic in the body. And I should mention there's many works um, in this context, but with, with different kinds of setups. For example, people study uh, random Lindebradians for quadratic Lindebradians. Uh, or people also studied not the second quantized model, but just, just take random matrix theory model of uh, Lindebradians, and so on and so forth. So there's various works along these lines with different setups, but our setup is the uh, fermionic universe space, uh, fermion creation and annihilation operators, and then um, it's a Lindebradian operators, and then um, we, we, we see the, uh, we also input some symmetries, but that is the setup. Okay, and then at the very rough level, we expect that our story should fall into the, the uh, uh, some version of non Hamitian random matrix series. But in non Hamitian random matrix theory, uh, they do not consider Lindebradians. So as we just discussed, Lindebradians are some operators, non Hamitian operators in the double Hilbert space, but it is not the most generic no Hamishan lambda matrix. Okay, so there's some constraint, physical constraint to take into account. So these are the ingredients I listed here. I, I kind of remember about this, but there's a double Hilbert space structure. When we try to interpret super operator as a, as a regular matrix, so we have to take into account this double Hilbert st uh, structure. Um, so quantum master equation is trace preserving, probability preserving. So trace of row at any time is one, okay? So that is another possible constraint. And then uh, we also impose some time reversal symmetries. And then as we found out, this time reversal symmetries in the Lindobradian context agrees with the definition of something of uh, KMS symmetry. So that's the another ingredient, okay? And the fourth uh, ingredient is, is the shift of the origin of the spectrum because Lindebradian spectrum is shift kind of one-sided to the, to, to, toward the um, uh, negative real axis, but we found it, it's important to shift the origin of the spectrum sometimes. So let me elaborate a little bit on this. So, so, um, sorry, sorry, question. so question. The, you, you're modeling the whole Lindbadian as a random matrix? I thought you were modeling the Hamiltonian and the jump operators as random matrices. Uh, yeah, so these are, since they are random matrix, yeah. the whole matrix is, I can still call it the random matrix, uh -huh. but you can choose to give. But, but many of these conditions will be automatic if you just use the structure of the Lindbad equation and model just. Here. That's true. Yeah. But, so, it's all, so from my perspective, it's automatic, okay. but it's still. Okay. Interesting to see if I can realize all 33 okay. symmetry classes, okay. because I, by, con by construction, I input these ingredients. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so that is the something we wanted to see. Okay, so here's a quick elaboration of the condition that I'm discussing. So um, this is a kind of pictorial way of saying I map my super operator to the regular matrix. So I have a, um, um, for example, density operator row. So you can think about, about this as operator taking input and output. But, uh, but I want to view my Lindbradian as a regular operator, not a super operator. So for that purpose, I want to describe my density operator as a regular, regular state or regular vector in the Hilbert space. The pictorial way to do, to do this is that to bend this input line to the output line 
So then there's no input anymore, just output reg. So this is like a state uh, defined in a bigger Hilbert space because I have a two, two regs. Okay, so that's the double Hilbert space structure I'm talking about. And then um, Lindobradian is um, trace and hermeticity preserving dynamic. So it's not a, once again, not a, a random uh, non Hermitian operator. And the hermeticity condition uh, 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 can be understood as a symmetry condition on the Lindobradian. Uh, we found it's convenient to use a concept of modular conjugation known in the theory of operator algebra. And basically, to make a long story short, uh, because of hermeticity preservation, Lindobradian is already invariant under this modular conjugation symmetry. So what modular conjugation symmetry does is to exchange uh, these two Hilbert spaces uh, here and here, and then take the, the complex conjugation. So that's called modular conjugation, but Lindobradian is, a, a similar, uh, is any, Lindobra, any random Lindobradian by construction is invariant under this uh, modular conjugation symmetry. And then also, um, as I show you, Lindobradian spectrum is always on the imaginary, uh, so the negative real, uh, real part of the, of the complex frame. Um, so previous, uh, sorry, pre, I, I didn't show this, the previous classification sometimes didn't do uh, this shift I'm, I'm performing here. Um, so if I do this, if I don't do this shift, I will miss some symmetry. If I adjust my origin of the, the uh, uh, energy spectrum, I will, I will find more, more symmetry classes. So this is another uh, small improvement in this. Uh, and then there's also another uh, concept uh, which was discussed by Albert and Jan, a strong but at weak symmetry. So um, strong symmetry acts on each cat individually, but weak symmetry is a state uh, symmetry which acts on both these, these two Hilbert spaces simultaneously, and we have to distinguish these two cases. Okay, so there are a lot of ingredients, and then I don't think I can explain everything in detail, but main message is that I have to impose many um, physical conditions. I cannot just take uh, any non Hamiltonian Hamiltonians, and they, I cannot use them to to uh, that Lindobradian. Lindobradians have some constraint. So this kind of twist constraint, the hermicity preservation. How, yeah. so, so how does it? Uh, in what ways does it constrain the the de degree of non non unitarity? Like does it? Like, yeah, it, it does. Yeah. So like, to, to, like how? Like I guess like. Intuitively, how, how that, is, it, is that that's what gives you the two terms, the two non non unitary terms that you have in the uh... Uh, non unitary term do satisfy these conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like just yeah. like it's what constrains the the kinds of terms you could have, I guess, right? Yeah, it's just constrained what kind of terms you could have. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Is there an intuitive way to see why it's those terms or? Yeah. So I want to. So 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 um um. So what is what is Hermitian Hermitian condition? So if I take uh, some operator OIJ, um, this is the this is the uh, Hermitian conjugate of this matrix. But you're doing Hermitian conjugate in of the uh, like the super operator. Yes, yes. So 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 that's why I want to translate this into the language of a state, yeah. which we can just read off from here. So I have to exchange I and J, which means I exchange two Hilbert spaces. Mm -hmm. And they also take star, so that's why it has to be anti-unitary symmetry. Uh -huh. So it's like a, this is like a translation of the original. Right, definition. So you're defining like a like a, like dual vector spaces, like a, like a relationship between. This is exchanging spaces. the original or original and the dual Hilbert space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then non-trivially. Um, I don't know which one is trivial, no, which one is no, non-trivial, okay. but they have to exchange them. Yes. Okay. The questions. Okay. Um, so, so here's kind of a bit more details, but I think details are not super important once again. So, um, these are the, my generic SYK model with generic Lindobradians. 
And then uh, we have to impose a symmetry. So I, I use plus and minus because now I have a doubled Hilbert space. So it's, it, it, it is convenient to introduce fermion operators for the original space and also the fermion operators for the, for the doubled the, the pattern of the original Hilbert space. And then there's the um, modular conjugation, which exchanges two kinds of fermion operators and then take complex conjugation. And then total Lindobradia must be fermion number odd because fermion, sorry, Lindobradia operator is bosonic. So I will always have to impose this symmetry. But depending on the number of Q here and the number P here, sometimes uh, there is a stronger uh, uh, a fermion number parity condition is preserved. Fermion number parity for each plus and the minus space can be separately conserved sometimes, okay? And then on top of these generic conditions, I also impose time reversal symmetry, like in the SYK Hamiltonian story. So there's additional um, anti-unitary symmetry, which is basically time reversal symmetry. So with these, there are some choices that I have to make. So these, these are always satisfied. For some choice of Q and P and N, this type of symmetry may arise. And then it's including all these, what kind of symmetry classes do appear? So that is the analysis we did. So P doesn't need to be even, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. have to be even. Yeah, it can be odd. So in this context, what does time reversal mean in, in, uh, when you have dissipation or the Lindbladian? Is yeah, that... so it's simply some anti-unitary operator. So time reverse asymmetry can mean various things, I think. Um, for example, I think uh, Ash used certain different, maybe more physical meaning of time reverse asymmetry. Here, it's simply the regular time reverse asymmetry of the, of the uh, uh, Wigner type, that the anti-unitary uh, sym uh, uh, symmetry or an anti-unitary operation acting on the uh, physical Hilbert space. So it's not KMS, it's just time reversal. Symmetry. Ah, yes, yeah, so, sorry, I forgot to say, but this together with J gives you KMS condition mm -hmm. at, at infinite temperature. So, so you can create KMS, KMS symmetry from by combining these two. Okay. But physically, time, time reversal symmetry may require something more like a detailed balance and something like that. So, but here I'm just introducing time reversals formally in the, in the sense of Wigner. It's a, it's a symmetry representation theorem, the regular quantum mechanics. Okay, so a lot of details. <laughs> um, and then um, a lot of details for the setup and a lot of details for the result. <laughs> okay, so this type of research tends to produce a lot of tables. <laughs> so, so originally we started with Hamishan and the matrix theory, there's already 10 possible cases. And there are no Hamishan case, there are 38 cases, so there are a lot of tables to make. That's, if you look at this type of literature, you see a lot of tables, and we essentially created another table, okay, which is a big table. And then um, depending on the conditions we're imposing, we realize uh, such and such symmetries. Um, but I don't want to bore you by explaining details of the classification table we did. So I just want to highlight the result so, so this is some of the main findings first. Although no Hamishan random matrix theory allows 38 possibilities, we don't realize all possibilities, but these are the possibilities we found uh, in our model. So, so not, not many, we only realize this is done 10 cases, okay? And then uh, I already mentioned something like A and A1. So these are the uh, symmetry label for the symmetry classes of random matrix theory. And I explained unitary orthogonal simplex, sim symplectic, they are labeled by A, A1, A2. But, but now we have a many classes in non Hamishan random matrix theory. There are many labels, but I, I, I think I don't have a time to go into the definition of each label, but you can just think of these are just different names for different symmetry classes, okay? Um, and then um, previously, people classified a quadratic Lindbradians uh, in this work, but in many body contexts, we, we found new classes uh, which were not realized in quadratic Lindbradians. So clearly, 
it's, it's different from uh, no interacting case. Um, other notable feature is that um, cases with Kramer's uh, type degeneracy, like, like Hermitian case, energy level spectrum is doubly degenerate. If you have a, a half of the integer spin time reversal symmetry, there's similar Kramer's type degeneracy in complex energy level spectrum, but it, they do not show up in our, in our uh, classifications. Um, and then I think I also want to mention uh, this work, which came up uh, almost simultaneously with our work. So in this paper, they took the program, and that took the pro 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 program of classifying interacting bosonic uh, ring of radium, just like ours. Ours are fermionic many body ring of radium. This work did many body bosonic ring of radium. And then um, for some reason, they also were not able to find any symmetry class with Kramer's type of degeneracy. So there may be some fundamental reason why we can't really realize Kramer's degeneracy in many body uh, in the brackets, but we, we are not sure. And then um, there's also the fourfold periodicity in terms of N, where N is a number of on the fermion mod. So that is similar to the uh, mod eight periodicity I mentioned for the regular, regular SYK in the Bradium. Here I think it's, it's four because, because of the double structure. Um, but see, but both the four periodicity still survives. So it may suggest that my runner zero mode may be stable against, um, as far as bulk is topological, boundary my runner zero mode may be still stable against dissipations. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, I, I, I don't have a proof of this. So do you think the other non-realized uh, classes of the 38 are just not physical or this model is too restrictive in some way? That may be the case. So, so yeah, there's other cases. So I think bosonic uh, case we didn't see, but there's other models, for example, you can also classify random matrix appearing in the classical stochastic process or something like that. These people did another heroic effort of classifying such things. Such so I, I don't remember their result, but it can it may be possible. But they they got this case in other settings. But fundamental reasons currently unclear. Um, yeah. Is there an understanding of you had like many constraints, and dropping each one of those to eventually realize all thirty eight? What happens when you like drop various subsets? Of ah. That's an interesting question. We we didn't try, but yeah, we can think about dropping one one by one. And eventually, like if you get ones with the promise degeneracy by dropping, maybe that's yeah. So that that may narrow down possible reason for for this. Yes, yeah. We 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 are not sure. We did we didn't try, but that may be interesting suggestion. Is anyone your values of Q and P? I guess this. You have additional symmetries. Are there some classes that you can not realize when you impose those additional symmetries? Yes, there, there is, I think. Um, so that's that's when we essentially get um yeah, so so sorry, maybe it's a bit so some so actually this additional symmetry comes into four types, and sometimes we don't realize some of these. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's certainly true that in some cases we only there are a certain kind of anti intersymmetry but not the others. That's, that's, that's possible. Okay. Are there questions? So, yeah, this is the symmetry analysis. Okay. Um, I also want to talk about a little bit about the level statistics story, just for maybe five minutes. Um, yeah, so, you know, random matrix theory never be complete just by symmetry analysis because it comes is also the an analysis of the energy level statistics. So here, also it's motivated by, by my uh, uh, SYK ring of radian story. Here, I just completely changed the gear. I just discussed the level statistics of no Hamishan random matrix theory. And once again, it has been motivated by, by not by Hamiltonian, but for example, statistics of S matrix or QCD or some other context. So no Hamishan random matrix theory 
outside of this window gradient context has been studied quite a lot. Um, but the recent story is, is that no hermeticity affects the, the symmetry enumeration such that we now get 38 symmetry classes. And then as it turns out for many of these cases, level statistics have not been calculated yet, okay? So for Hamishan case, of course, level statistics has been studied quite extensively, but not, not for the um, no Hamishan nanometric series. So we, very recently, we studied level statistics of these four cases, A1 dagger, A2 dagger, C and D. I will explain what these symmetry classes are. We chose these classes because we expect these classes exhibit interesting uh, spectral correlations. Uh, almost simultaneously with our work, uh, this group also studied the level statistics of A and Dagger and the to Dagger. And the recently, another paper also mentioned the level statistics of these papers, uh, these, these cases. Um, class C and D, we posted our paper to archive like two weeks ago, but it has been on hold for two weeks. I don't, I don't know why, but it, I hope it will show up soon. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so what is what do we want to do? So um, we want to compute something called characteristic polynomial averaged over ensemble, random matrix theory ensemble. Um, if you are familiar with regular random matrix theory, average of determinant of e minus h raised to power some power n is called the um, moment of a characteristic polynomial. Since it's a non Hamitian random matrix theory, we extend the definition of a characteristic polynomial a little bit by introducing the second factor, determinant of e star minus h star. The reason we want to add this part is that um, if you take these, these pairs, e minus h and e, e star minus h dagger, it is naturally related to the uh, uh, spectral density or level level correlation functions on the complex plane. Okay, so we, have, we just need to define things slightly differently. So this is the center of object of a central interest. Okay, so thinking of time, I just almost directly go to the result. Oh yeah, but here is the one, one, one slide just for the te technique we use. So we use something called the uh, replica nonlinear sigma model approach. In that approach, we can represent this characteristic polynomial as a some sort of uh, uh, Grassmann Gaussian integral, which we can analyze. And then, um, um, then if you go to the to, to the somehow you can identify the low energy mode in this path integral, which which gives rise to this nonlinear sigma model field theory. So that is a very standard technique in in the matrix theory and then theory of disordered metal. So I'm I'm just extending this. Uh, 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 this uh, approach to no Hamitian random matrix theory. And mostly this approach was invented for Nishigaki and Kamene for the case of no Hamitian uh, random matrix. Okay. And, and then, um, yeah, there's some details perhaps I should skip, but symmetry breaking uh, uh, pattern, which describes this nonlinear sigma model field theory, takes the form of something called the strong to weak symmetry breaking. Um, so that's, that is the uh, technology we are using. Okay. But this is just a quick aside. So, um, so, so in the end, we get some result for the, for the uh, characteristic polynomials, both for one point and two point. And then this is just a slide to show that we, we really did the calculation. Um, but, but you can also compare our result with Numerics. So if you take generate random matrices numerically, and you can calculate characteristic polynomials, and then uh, density of states, and then uh, level level correlation functions numerically. So characteristic polynomial, we we essentially got exactly for any number of n. We can also take large n, but for even for finite uh, matrix dimension, we got essentially the exact result. To get, um, yeah. Uh, what was the symmetry that was getting strong to weak broken? 
yeah, so we have to go back to this, right? So, so first thing, you know, this is just exactly rewriting of the characteristic polynomial using the path integral. Then you integrate over a random matrix. So it generates effectively the interactions between this fermion field. Okay? Uh, and then, but this fermion fields comes in, come, come into two types, psi and the chi. And psi is related to the first determinant. And the chi is related to the second determinant. So that's how it shows up here, but technically it is essentially the same as schringer keredish pass integral. So you need two flavors. There's a two independent replica rotation symmetry acting on psi field and chi field, which leaves this action invariant. If you do this, if you analyze the interaction term using large N, you will see that this symmetry spontaneously broke down to the diagonal subgroup. So this is the symmetry which is which is, which, which is broken. And then once again, if I since I can interpret psi and chi as a uh, schringer keredish copy plus and minus, or in the double Hilbert space language, bra and cap, this is the same as uh, weak to uh, sorry strong to weak symmetry breaking. So, so this this only works because you have mod squared of the uh, determinant and the observable that you're looking at, right? Like if you just take a determinant. Yeah, we are so, thinking about determinant, yes. No, but you, you determinant times is conjugate, roughly. Yes, right? yes. Right. But if you just take a determinant itself, this would, uh, you'd have one copy of, of fermions, but. That's right. So. It would not give you the right, uh, it would not give you the right measure, I think. That's right. So we did not consider because that, that it's, it's, so, for example, if you consider that, typical thing you may consider is a, is a resorbent, one over E minus H. Yeah. But, since H has a complex spectrum, resolvent is a bit ill-defined. Because what e, e minus H can hit zeros. So usually you can use port prescription, prescription to avoid it. So that's why you can just consider H minus E, one, one over H minus E. But here we cannot even, even think about it. So I think what you're saying may be logical possibility, but we find it's more physical to consider these two pairs appear in pairs such that we can get two dimensional delta functions. Yeah. How do, do you know whether these are all the possible moments that you can consider? Or maybe is there like a way to think about it in terms of like like my, like determinants of minors instead rather than trying to take powers of the matrix? You mean negative n? Oh no, like no. minors, like if I oh, minus, minus yeah. um I think in the Hamishan case, people may have considered something like that. Yes, we, we yeah. did not consider it. Yes. But yeah, possibly, yes. Yeah, kind of kind of similar to churn churn Simons. Oh, is it? Yeah, that I didn't see it, but I, I like to, I, yeah, so another, yeah, I think I want to relate to, because regular Hamishan random matrix is series so rich, it's related to many things. This one is, I don't know any connection to, so, for example, Chan Simon series. So it'd be no, it's just mathematical, not physical. No, no, I'm I, I, I'm happy with mathematical right, right. <laughs> connection. But anyway, so um, I, I, it's prudent to skip this, and we also summarize our result. But so here's my final slide. So we classify many body random in the gradients, fermionic ones. And we also study uh, level statistics of non Hamitian random matrices. But there's, I think, a lot of more room to improve our calculations. In particular, characteristic polynomials we basically got exactly, but um, to get spectral density and then level level repulsion, level level correlation function, we have to take a replica limit. We are currently lacking very systematic way of taking replica limit. I, I did show this result which arises from the replica limit, but unlike characteristic polynomial, I think agreement is not perfect yet. So there may be some more technical uh, improvement we can make. And then above all, I want to see a good applications of all these calculations and the classifications we are doing. And then also I'm, I'd be happy to see if there's any other connection to, you know, beautiful area of, you know, um, like a number theory, quantum gravity, they have a connection to 
Hermitian random matrix series, but as far as I know, there's no direct connection to non Hermitian random matrix series. I'm happy to see if there's such connection. So with that, I want to conclude. So thank you very much for your attention. So if I understood correctly, you found that for the class of Limbladians you analyzed, you could only get some of those 38 classes. Mm -hmm. If you consider other types of, I mean, I, do you know um, more other types of Limbladians or other types of non-unitary dynamics that realize more than the ones that you found? Yeah, for example, um, Quadratic ones, but that's that's limited. And, uh, quadratic isn't that a special case? Um, or it's you view so in, in the quadratic case, you don't realize many body Hamiltonian. You just analyze okay. fast quantized Hamiltonian. So then the quantification slightly different. You think of it as a single particle. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So it's a good question. So once again, um, there's various setups. So um, um, yeah, fermionic many body, bosonic many body, fermionic quadratic, and then classical stochastic matrix. And uh, I don't really remember all these results, but yeah, none of yeah. For for example, bosonic one I think realizes like eleven or twelve or something like possibilities, a bit more than fermionic cases, but it doesn't realize all thirty eight cases. Good question. I, I don't I don't I don't have a systematic understanding of this. But in the usual unitary case, there's no problem getting all 10 classes, I assume, with just some if you were to look at if you look at the many body class, actually you will miss many of the chiral classes. So oh, so, really? so 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 this there's an eight for the periodicity, but in terms of level statistics, it's always G O E or G U E, but it just comes with certain different like a degeneracy or something like that. So, but if you want to realize, so one may, one may think if I consider quadratic uh, Majorana Hamiltonian, if you just look at single particle Hamiltonian, you realize 10, which comes with a lot, of, a lot of cases with particle hole symmetries, but many body spectrum are bounded from below. So we can't really have the. I see. Um, but, but in this case, people can get. Uh, other symmetry classes by considering, if you consider supersymmetric SYK, instead of H, you can analyze spectral spect statistics with supercharge. Then you, you extend this table a little bit. So something like that. Yeah, so there may be some fundamental reason to reduce, to go from 38 to something if I consider many body version. Out of those 38, how many did you get in your classification of Lindblad? Uh, six or seven, I forgot. Uh, but yeah, not many, less than 10. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so I think it is. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Nine. Okay. nine. And um, yeah, of course, there's a chance that we are missing few classes, but I don't think we exhaust all 38. So those 30, the classification of 38 uh, non-Hermitian Hamiltonians, that's for single particle Hamiltonians or many body? Like... It's kind of the more abstract level, take matrix, which is non-Hermitian. And then we, we, you, you even don't ask how it comes about. So yeah, so that is the more kind of abstract. Is it not more of a time reversal symmetry classification? Sorry? It, it, it's a classification of time reversal symmetry, right? Yeah, so they just consider uh, anti unitary symmetry. Yeah. Take star. <laughs> and then, yeah, we could say it's time reversal symmetry, but that's, that's the, yeah. Yeah. So, so in the unitary and the many body case, if I'm just considering time reversal, I can either have no time reversal or t squared is one or t squared is minus one. Uh -huh. So for these classes, is there like a similar, uh, you know? Yes, yes, like that's right. So this anti-unitary symmetry I mentioned, depending on p and q, sometimes r squared to plus one, r squared to minus one. So I, I wrote it in a kind of abstract way, but for each q and uh, maybe p, 
we look for explicit expression of R, and then sometimes it's squared to plus one, sometimes it's squared to minus one to fermion number or something like that. So, so, so each, these each, yeah. classes are just are different realizations of R. And yes, yes, yes. So it, it, exactly, yeah, that's right, that's right. Like a different types so, uh, yeah so that's that's why i'm trying to list here but of course it's a bit complicated unfortunately um related to your last slide yes um, is it kind of random but is there the lindbladian equivalent of like eth so, yeah, I, I don't know. People studied, try to study, Jonah studied ETH for no Hamitian Hamiltonian, and I think they concluded there's no ETH, I think, but not, not in the Lindbergian context. So, once again, if it's not a generic no Hamitian Hamiltonian, but if it is in the Bradian, there may be some something we could say, but we don't know. So the sorry, the so the kind of the original threefold classification. The uh, I already asked about it, but like the unitary symplectic and and orthogonal. Are those, is that some terminology? Kind of similar to the like hermicity terminology that you had for the like the dual spaces, like like you had a super operator. Yes, yes, it's, it's similar. Yes, yes, it's similar. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, what exactly? How exactly is it related to kind of orthogonal orthogonal symplectic forms like like symplectic so, matrices? So yeah. So in the Hamishan case, if you impose, uh, for example, t t which squared to plus one, mm -hmm. you ended up saying, oh, my Hamiltonian must be the D algebra element of O n, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's a real symmetric matrix. Mm -hmm. So that is a terminology for orthogonal. The simplex uh -huh. is the same. So it's not the name of the symmetry itself, but the the, sure. the, the it's a name for ensemble. So that's why it's named that way. Okay. So you mentioned that there were classifications of stochastic matrices yes, as yes, well. Yes, yes, uh, How, like Lindblad's, they were originally inspired by classical fokker planck equations. So do you know if there are similarities between the classifications that you have and those stochastics? Or yeah, you, so... Even if you can say some words about the classification of stochastic. So matrix. stochastic matrix is classical, but yeah, it's very similar to Lindbladian, and it has to satisfy the the stochastic condition such that summing over probability to be one. So it's like a co every column, well, I forgot, row must still add up to one. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a random Hamiltonian, but with a, a, once again, there's some condition, which is similar to the trace, trace preserving conditions. I, I don't remember the result, but uh, this group, uh, uh, they, they did uh, this analysis. They also did the analysis for the bosonic in the brain. Question. So, if there's no further question, that section say. Yeah, yeah, yeah.